Gemini. Welcome to your love reading for February 2019. Happy Valentine's Day. We're going to look at couples, singles, and undefined relationships. So undefined relationships are maybe it's just not Facebook official, but you think you're maybe dating exclusively. Maybe it's on again, off again relationship. Maybe you're in a relationship with somebody who is married to somebody else. Maybe you're polyamorous. So I'm going to start with um, singles for Gemini's then do couples, and then do undefined at the end. And the timestamps will be in the bottom. But if you're in an undefined relationship, it's maybe in your better interest to watch um, the other sections as well because there might be pieces that resonate for you because you're sort of single, because you're sort of not. Okay, so here we go. Single Geminis for February. Uh, ooh. Okay, this is interesting. Um, in the recent past, it's like things are not maybe expanding or growing or moving and shifting as quickly as you'd like, like you're waiting for things to get better, and not necessarily um, in regards to relationships or, you know, waiting for the right person to show up. I mean, that is for a lot of you what it's going to be, like waiting for the right person to show up. That might be how you're feeling, um, but just like in your life in general, Okay. Like maybe like a business plan or something that you have, like it's taking longer for your business to grow than you thought. And you're like, oh, I was going to put off dating until like I was in a really financially secure situation where things are just like easy um, so that I have time to spend with my partner and I'm not working. But, you know, that kind of a thing. It's that that's like the recent history leading up until now. And they're saying the thing is, is that there are more things off balance here um, that are affecting potentially you drawing in the right partner for you than you're aware of. There are things hiding behind the scenes that you haven't, that haven't occurred to you yet, that you haven't thought about. There's definitely some things that are imbalanced that are not allowing the right person to come through for you. Um, and so right now the energy is kind of moving into this phase of, okay, um, what do I have to let go of here? Maybe you have to let go of a belief system such as, um, I'll never find the right person for me. You know, I, um, I'm 63 and I just got divorced. Like I don't have that much time in my life yet. Like what are the chances I'll meet my soulmate? Um, that's something you have to let go of. Okay. Whatever your belief system is that is inhibiting you here or whatever it is, whatever your excuse is for the reasons why it'd be hard to meet a partner or, um, whatever the circumstances, those are things that we need to fully examine, go beneath the surface of what we thought before, and then let go of those ideas so we can welcome the person in. And a lot of you, this does have to do with things related to work, time, money, possessions, um, or just like your balance between all of those things. So there's something a little bit fucked up there that's not allowing the right person to come through. Now, if you can really... Um, be honest and open and real with yourself. If And it's not saying like bully yourself, but be like really um, kind of cut and dry about this. Like dig deep, examine what this limiting belief is and just saying, okay, well, if this is what I want, if a love relationship is what's important to me, if this is what I'm hoping for, then I have to let go of this and then doing it. You know, you see how she has the sword here? She's holding on to it with, um, she's got one hand on the bottom and then she's gently touching the blade. Okay. But you know, should she trip and fall? <laughs> she's going to slice her fingers straight off. And so instead she wants to take her hand away and then just cut that thing that was going to, that she was going to trip and fall over out of her life, cut that belief system out. And then all of a sudden, here she is getting exactly what she wants a lot quicker than she realized she could. Because she's been, like, becoming impatient. Like, oh, man, this is taking longer than I thought. Maybe I'm just never going to, you know, fall in love and meet my soulmates or whatever. And they're like, if that's the belief system you have, cut that out right away. Because the timing just wasn't right. Maybe you were ready for the right person to show up in your life, but maybe they weren't ready for you to show up in theirs. It's not always about you. So cut that idea out, okay? And then you'll get what you want and you'll get it a lot quicker than you thought. And I mean, even like that first example, like, oh, you know, like I'm older, like what are the chances? Somebody else is going to be in that same exact situation. It's very likely they're your soulmate. So there's that. What else for single Geminis? They're saying that um, 
Love is coming for you and you just can't see it. There's a lot of secrets and shit going on here. They're saying some of you are not connected to your intuition. You're not really connected to your spiritual source energy. And this is why you can't see it. It's right there in front of you. You just have to open your eyes to it. And maybe that's what part of this energy of like cutting something out completely releasing a mindset or a situation from your life that'll make you open and ready to receive this love um, is what's going to help. You know, maybe it's just like cutting a blindfold straight off. <laughs> maybe it's saying, oh, how come I never realized that this person is right here in front of me and they are um, perfect for me? It could be that. And so they're saying that, you know, you're, you've been a little bit too focused on what's going wrong instead of focusing on the possibilities of like what's going right for you, that this is why you haven't been able to see that. So a simple mindset shift might be the key this month to finding love. So should you shift that mindset and release what it is you need to release, um, will the majority of Geminis find love this month? And they're saying paying attention to signs. This is why it's so important to connect your energy to that of the spiritual realm, to God, angels, the universe, whatever you believe. Um, and everybody experiences their spirituality in a different way. So if you feel connected to source through prayer, pray. If you feel that by taking a walk and just being alone in nature, do that. If it's through meditation, if it's through yoga, if it's through, you know, painting or cleaning your house, whatever it is, however you get in that flow where like epiphanies can just occur to you, this is recommended for you. And typically it is um, through, you know, either a ritualistic act like prayer or um, maybe reading your own tarot cards or, you know, meditation. But oftentimes it is through the creation of something. So, you know, planting a garden might be a way to do that or, um, you know, cooking even. And all of a sudden, bing, here's this epiphany. And all of a sudden, boom, you get what you want. So they're saying it's not a yes for the majority of Gemini's but it's not a no for the majority of Gemini's either. It's going to depend on your free will and your um, ability to follow this guidance and open yourself up and connect to your spirituality. And maybe if you don't have like a history of strong connection to the divine and being able to follow your intuition, this is going to be a more of a challenge for you. You know, maybe you're just starting to learn how to do that. Maybe you just started to learn how to read tarot. Maybe you just started, um, maybe you just converted to a new religion. Maybe you just decided that, you know, the religion you were in is not for you anymore and you're an atheist, but like you love yoga. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's about, um, it's not about the how, it's just about the what. And, and what you need to do is figure out for you personally, because that's going to vary for every person, um, how you're going to connect to that energy and then really trust the messages and the guidance that you get. There are signs all around you should you open your eyes. There is information and clues right there for you saying, hey, guess what? Love is here. It's coming. It's right in front of you. But... This is what you need to do in order to receive it. And so what's your action word here? And you have two of them, honor and uh, retrospection. So isn't that interesting? Because, you know, retrospection is saying, okay, I've held on to this belief system for so long, didn't work for me. Now that I'm looking backwards, maybe I need to cut that out and create a new reality or situation or energy flow where things can come in. And so they say the past is where it should be. It's behind you. We're moving forward. We're not allowing the past to affect us anymore at all, including the way that we used to think in the past about love and about its potential. And so they're saying standing firm on high ground and in clear air of your own integrity, like saying... Okay, look at how she's holding a sword, right? So a lot of swords energy. This is about communication. And communication as far as ideas, but also communication with the spiritual realm, no matter how you do that. Now this is pointing down into the ground. Okay, before she was holding it up, and um, now she's holding it the opposite direction. So it's like, as above, so below. So what I think about, what I talk about, becomes my reality. And so... A, a common example of this is I hear people saying, I'm a single mom. I'm a single mom. I'm a single mom. Every opportunity they get, I'm a single mom. 
oh yeah, um, here's my Tinder profile and I'm just gonna put in here, I'm a single mom. So yeah, it's important that your potential partners would know that you um, are a parent because that affects your dating life obviously, and whether or not somebody's going to be aligned with you for what they want in their future, but you don't say single mom. You know why? Because all of a sudden, when we put this into reality, and you're saying, I want a partner, and I particularly want a partner who enjoys my children, who loves them, who will be helpful with them. Um, if you're saying who I am at my core, who is me, is a single mom, meaning I do everything for my kids on my own for the most part. I mean, maybe you have an awesome co-parent, but you know, independently, I am a mother. Does that make sense that if what you're saying you want is not attainable because you're who you are is not a person who is um, working as a team potentially, or even open to that, the more that you're affirming, I'm single, the, as I'm a single mom, the more that you are, um, saying, I, because this is how I define myself, I am not open to the help or the love or the support of another person, you know, in regards to my situation with my children. And if they live with you, well then, good luck. Good luck finding, you know, that forever person until your kids are grown up and out of the house. So these are the kind of things that I'm thinking about. So you've got to kind of come outside of yourself, you know, standing on higher ground and look at this objectively, not from your own perspective, not from your own habits, not from your own past and say, how do other people perceive this? Right. And so this is how you're going to be able to redefine how it is, it's not changing your reality. It's not saying like, oh, you know what? I just don't, I don't want custody of my kids anymore because <laughs> I want love. No, it's not that. It's not changing your reality. It's just the way that you define it and the way that you speak about it and the way that you think about it. So you're saying, I'm a mom. That's it. Just get ready, just cutting that single out. I'm a mom. Yep. And I want to be in a loving relationship. I'm really excited about finding a partner who supports me and loves my kids and you know like you know the more people there are to love these children like the better happier lives these kids are going to have it's going to be wonderful that's where you want to be with that not I am single I am a mom and I'm also looking for my soulmate <laughs> right okay so what else for single Geminis um they're saying yeah perception shifts. And they say it's hard to do because then you're like, maybe you're going to blame yourself. Or you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I've been hurting myself so long. Or like, hmm, you know, changing the way that you think about things or the way that you do things or like getting rid of people in your life or, you know, routines that used to bring you pleasure and now they really don't. But like change is hard. Like that's going to be painful, but it's not going to kill you. It's going to be a good thing for you actually, because this is how you're going to connect. And so they're saying like, um, starting to talk about what it is that you want, what it is that you desire, and even asking other people, even though the criticism coming back is hard, but asking other people, like, what do you think? What do you notice about um, the way that I put myself out there, the way that I talk about myself, or what it is that I want? Like, what kind of incongruencies do you, or inconsistencies do you notice there? And it hurts to hear that, right? but it's actually going to make you stronger. And this is awesome because this is that like forever type of energy. These two people, like they grew old together and they get to sit to, sit back in their comfortable life, you know, in their home that's all paid off, in their retirement with their dogs and go, wow, what an amazing life we lived. And this is what you're manifesting should you be able to follow this guidance and do that. They're saying, but it does require you to take that blindfold off, see? And be super open and honest with yourself about these kind of things. They're like, honesty, the biggest thing. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop lying to yourself about the reality of things. And just say, okay, and here, this specific piece of this is within my control to change it. You know, and so it's kind of like, let's say, for example, you're, oh, I don't have time today. I'm just like really busy. But, you know, I do want a partner. Well, if you had the right partner, would you figure out a way to make time? Are there things that you would cut out of your life or change a little bit to make time and space for that person? I bet you would. And so these are things that we need to stop lying to ourselves and just say, okay, this is a limiting belief. So now we're moving on to couples. What's up, couple Gemini? Um, so in the recent past, it's like 
nobody's like lying to the other part to your, you know, you guys are not lying to you to each other, you and your partner. Um, you're not deceiving each other, but at the same time, it's kind of like neither party is feeling like you're getting um, enough sexual fulfillment, uh, enough like physical attention. And then also on top of that, you're also feeling like you don't have a lot of choice about it. And so this is kind of starting to wear you down and starting to depress you a little bit. But they're saying this month, actually, things can change. and But the way that they're going to change and they can get more exciting and a lot more lusty and fun is um, to not make it like a deep emotional thing. Um, yeah, it hasn't been fair. It hasn't felt awesome. But you know what? Like, and it's not, okay, so avoidance isn't necessarily a healthy strategy all the time, but not everything has to be talked to death. Um, they're saying this month, you can feel your feelings, but you definitely don't need to focus on communicating them all of the time when they're hurtful or painful. So let's say your partner said something that was really hurtful to you and you're kind of like, oh, well, that really hurts, you know? And so it's like saying, don't deny that it hurts. Don't deny to yourself that it was painful, but maybe this specific month through the end of February, moving into like the first couple, I would say till the 3rd of March, um, you don't want to necessarily go and tell them, hey, you know, this thing that you said, it was really painful and I feel like you said it on purpose and you really hurt me because all that's going to do is create like a bigger divide or a bigger wedge. It's not going to destroy your relationship, but it is going to create the situation where um, it's going to be harder to bring the passion and that lust back. And a part of you is like, okay, well, you know, things have to be talked about and discussed so that they don't happen again. So that, you know, sometimes we have to create some drama so something new and better can be built in its place. But they're like, this time, really think about the emotions that you're having. And, um, and think also when, when they hurt you, when they disappoint you, when they upset you, try to remember all the times that they did the opposite, that they made you feel really special, really loved, really cared about, um, really considered, really respected. And so, and this is what you're going to want to communicate with your partner. You know, you come home and they do the same thing they ever always do. They always cook dinner, for example. Um, and you know, it's just normal. But maybe today, go home and say, you know what, it really makes me feel cared about and loved and um, respected that when I come home, you have dinner ready or that you've already started it. Because I know when you do things like that, that you know I've worked really hard all day and I'm stressed and I don't like to cook. And so the fact that you're doing this is really, really special. And I don't always tell you that. And I, you know, I want to tell you today how awesome that makes me feel how happy that makes me, how happy I am that I chose you as my partner. And if you were to do that, all of a sudden it's like boom, boom, boom. Overnight, you're going to be boning again. Um, they're saying the past is the past. The present is now and the future is not defined by the past. And so they're saying that um, your partner is actually showing you love in a lot of ways and you're just maybe not noticing it. So if you can open your eyes to that and then communicate that to them as opposed to like anything negative, that would be really beneficial for you. They're saying you're going to have a lot of satisfaction from that. Um, your sex life might be better than it has been in recent you know, months or years before this kind of stuff started happening here. They say it's all about communication, but it's about communication in, um, in regards to what you love, what's going right, what's really, really positive. And also... They're saying, like, if you can make sure when your sex life does pick up again to verbally be like, oh, yeah, I love it, that would be great for your partner as well. You'll get a lot more sex and a lot more fulfilling sex that way. They're saying, yeah, you're still going to have challenges. Yeah, it's still going to be, like, stuff going on and you're feeling like maybe you're just avoiding it. But right now, first things first, you want to get back to that energy of like excitement and lust and like fun with your partner. You want to be excited to come home before you even start to try to delve in deep and deal with whatever kind of shit you have going on. They're saying this is the most important thing. Telling your partner that you are excited to be around them, to be with them, to be their partner and all of that 
world of a difference for the month of February. Now, for those of you in a um, undefined kind of status relationship, what they're saying is this is a, um, you know, historically, you might have had like a couple suspicions, fears, doubts about this situation in the past, but generally feeling pretty confident and good about it, kind of feeling like, oh, well, there's things that I don't really know. I don't know how it's going to work out. Like, I don't know what this is what's going, you know, right, what's going wrong. But like, for the most part, I feel like I'm in the right place at the right time. Like, there's just kind of, like, there's a reason that maybe I don't understand as to why I'm here right now. <laughs> and so what they're saying is, though, right now, it's not like that feeling is lost, but you might not be particularly enthused or happy about this situation. Things just kind of seem out of balance. Um, but then you'll kind of teeter -tot totter back into that feeling of like, okay, wait, yeah, you know what, though? Like, mm, maybe things don't feel exactly right, but I do kind of still feel like I'm here for a reason, but now I'm starting to doubt it. Am I happy? Am I not? But then why am I staying? But then there's a reason why I'm staying. And then you come back into this feeling of like, oh, wait, I feel really good again. And so you're kind of like, oh, my gosh, I'm starting to feel a little bit bonkers, <laughs> you know? Um on a day-to-day -day level, like this day to the next, I don't really know what I want or how I feel about this person in this situation. And so how am I supposed to talk about that with them? And so what they're saying is moving into the future, like, you know, the end of February into the beginning of March, that, you know, you might kind of tip back on that teeter-totter, this one like this, into this energy of like, hmm, maybe the situation is hopeless. Maybe I shouldn't give so much of myself and my time and my energy and my love to this situation um, anymore. But then all of a sudden, end up going, oh, you know what? I'm super satisfied. I'm really happy about this. And so what should you be doing to kind of try to stop these violent swings back and forth? And they're saying like understanding your own strength. Um, figuring out what your intentions are, what your boundaries are, and kind of standing your ground, saying, okay, well, what is the reason when I'm teetering this way that I feel this way? How could I prevent myself from feeling that way? Is there something I need to say or do? Like, is, is there something my partner is doing and I'm allowing that makes me feel that way or go that way. And so then you assert your boundary. And if they don't respect it, well, then that shit's on them. But you're not going to let it teeter that far, okay? So for let's use the example of somebody who is like in a third-party relationship. You're in a relationship with somebody who's married, okay? Now, you're saying like, oh, okay, here comes Valentine's Day. And my... Because I'm a straight woman, I'm just, tarot's not gender specific, it doesn't have to, it'll still apply to you if this isn't your situation. But, okay, so, so my boyfriend, okay, is going to take his wife out for Valentine's Day, even though he says he loves me and not her. Because he's got to keep up appearances or whatever, make her happy so she doesn't bitch at him and, you know, take half of his money and his kid. Okay, so, based on that, I'm going to get really upset because... Now I feel like he's putting her feelings and needs above mine, but allegedly he loves me, right? That might be the kind of mindset you're in, and it teeters all the way down here. So you could put your boundary in and say, hey, here's the deal. This is important to me, and so you will be spending time with me on Valentine's Day. And if they say no, you asserted your boundary, right? And maybe your relationship ends. And But you're not going to let it swing all the way this way. That it, That's when you're kind of in that hopeless energy, right? And you're like, okay, well then, so be it. Because now what does that do? It frees you up to be with somebody who's actually free to be with you, right? And I'm not judging you. But what I'm saying is, now let's say the opposite happens. And they say, absolutely, you're right. I don't feel like Valentine's Day is the best day to tell them. But yeah, I'm going to come up with an excuse and I'm going to spend it with you because I love you and because this is important to you. All of a sudden, it swings to the opposite direction and now you feel hopeful. Do you see what I mean? Um, but that it's that piece about asserting boundaries and kind of saying, here's what I need in order to stop those violent swings. Now, it might not be something so dramatic as that in your personal situation. This isn't the situation for everybody. Some people, it's something lighter. You just started dating and you don't know if it's committed or not, you know, and so it could be something completely different. But either way, it's about asserting, here's what I need. Here is my boundary. I'm going to stand firm in this. And that's that, and then letting the chips fall where they may. But the problem is, you can assert your boundary, but if you don't follow through with what you say, 
well then guess what it's gonna get even wilder and um i I'm sorry, but it's going to be like a really tough February for you if that's the case. So whatever boundary is set, you have to mean it and you have to follow through regardless of the consequence, okay? Now, so they're saying some of you are afraid. You're afraid that that means that things are hopeless, that you're almost resigning to, you know, a fate that you don't want. But what they're saying is you can't give to a situation that you already feel like is not going to be what you want and expect a happy outcome. So if you assert your boundary, okay, if you say, this is how it is, and I'm not saying ultimatums are healthy, but I, but boundaries are, and there's a difference, okay? It's not saying, hey, despite your feelings and um, what you need and trying to find a consequence, here is my hard line that isn't fair, take it or leave it. It's not like that. It's saying, here's what I'm comfortable with. This is what um, is how this is how things are for me okay because I need to worry about me first and foremost and I need you to respect that and if you don't respect it then this right and it's, so it's they're similar but different okay so like a different kind of boundary would be like um hey I'm waiting until marriage to have sex and then they're like oh but everybody else does it and like you know um Maybe just give me a blowjob. And you're like, okay, but for me, I define sex, so I'm going to say no. But I'll give you a handy. <laughs> you know? It's that kind of stuff. Um, that's the difference between a boundary and an ultimatum. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, they're saying, so regardless of how the chips fall, you are going to end up in this happily ever after, like, really joyful um, space. And it might not be in February, but this is, like, the catalyst that leads you down that road, down that path. But if you don't assert the boundary, then you're just saying, oh, okay, so wherever I am at, whatever's happening for me, I'm okay with that. And if it's subpar, if you're not already feeling really amazing about it, if you are teetering between like, oh, this is really great. No, it's fucking awful. Well, then you're going to continue to experience it, that. If you don't like the way that something is, you change it. If you like the way that something is, you don't change it. It's a very simple formula. So something has to change, and you can only change um, your side of it, right? So there's that. Now, is there anything else that undefined need to know? And they go, sometimes life isn't fair, and it fucks up your emotional balance. Um, and it's challenging to know, like, what you truly feel at times. Because sometimes, like... Anger and resentment, for example, resentment is not a true feeling. It's the accumulation of many angry episodes. Anger is not a real feeling. It's a reaction to the feeling of sadness or lack. So you're going to want to kind of challenge yourself to look at what are my feelings specifically, and then what is the opposite thing that I want? Is that achievable here? Yes or no? And if it is, change something in order to achieve it, or... If the answer is no, then like if you choose to stay in this, then you're choosing to feel the way that you feel. And it, and I mean, that's on you. You know, life is a series of choices. That's all that it is. So, um, love and light and I'll see you in March. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!